Roby G or some shit like that. Anyway, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, fuck, what, fuck, fucking whatever. Uh, Junjo talks about shit. Something I'm doing. It's a working title. Uh, I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna talk about shit in my own unique way. More unique than usual this week is thanks to my good old buddy Morgan and Max. That's Captain Morgan's and Pepsi Max right there. Mm. It's good shit. You can nail the perfect balance for that one. The perfect balance of Coca Cola to Captain Morgan. You can't more than spice, but you ever wonder, you know, is it like Captain Coca-Cola? Is that supposed to be the way I'm doing it? But well, fuck it, Pepsi Max was the one on offer, so fuck you. Um, I'm a little fucked. Not very. Not very. I'll be a lot less after dinner. I can start drinking again. I'm not a career alcoholic. I'm more like a freelance alcoholic. Like every now and again, odd job alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic at all, okay? I don't have a problem with fucking alcohol. I only drink when there's reason to, or when I have particularly good booze. You know, which is not often because I'm a fucking student. I can't afford good booze. Um, got a fucking sweet bottle. Need a bottle of fucking blackborn over there that I plan on downing at some point tonight, and that'll be social. But right now I'm drinking the Captain Morgan simply because I want it to. Uh, you know, one of those Batman posters is like, you know, from Raz Al Ghul, like, I did it for peace. You know, it's like, <laughs> two face, I did it for revenge. And Bane, I did it to cleanse the world. Oh. Shit. Oh. I did it to cleanse the world. Bad man. Look at my penis. Um. Uh. Don't know if you can hear any of that. I'm told in no such things. What is people telling me on Facebook? Um. What is people telling me? Oh Jesus, I ain't weeding that right now. I got shit to do. I got shit to talk about. I post the status telling people what to talk about. Paul, my friend, um, he's posted two stuff. Nobody else is Somebody other than Paul as well. <laughs> Come on, um, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I posted something on Facebook telling people to talk about shit, I'm looking at my hand right now, this is because I got shit on my hand, this is what I'm going to talk about, okay, Paul wanted me to talk about two things, he wanted me to talk about the new 300 film, and Xbox One, I can't be asked to watch the trailer for this new 300, I, I, I knew there was something I was supposed to, you know those feelings, when you're on YouTube and you're like, there was something I was supposed to look at, and you forget. You're like, shit. Jesus. It's like that feeling when you walk into a womb. Room. Room. Not womb. Not a woman's womb. Room. Pandas. Kiana has told me to talk about pandas. I'll think of something. I'll add it to the list. Jesus Christ. I'm going to be scrolled over. I'm going to be like an eldritch text. Um. I'm clearly not drunk enough if I can say the words Eldritch text in reasonable condition. Um, but yeah, to talk about Battlefront 3, I need to talk about the Xbox One, and I'm going to make this very quick because there's not much I can say about it. I'm an Xbox 360 gamer, and you know, look right here. It's covered in fucking bubble wrap because I like to keep the dust off it while I'm not playing. But, um, uh,. You know, but, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not an Xbox gamer, I, you know, but, um, 
you, you know, I and also I'm adverse to change. I really wanted the Xbox One to be good. I kept saying, I kept recycling the same line all throughout. You know, fucking um, the build-up and the rumors, the rumors of uh, fucking you know the DRM and shit. I was like, Ugh. okay, Microsoft. You can tell, you can say that they're evil. You know, that's under debate, to be honest. I mean, they're a bit of a profiteering company, but the way I saw it, they weren't as evil as most companies. You know, that made that much money. Uh, you know, that was before E3. I said they, they weren't, they, they're, they're evil, maybe, but you couldn't say they were stupid. After E3, I'm not so sure. Some people say it's a genius strategy. Some people say, that, you know, they figured, you know, why compete with the Wii U and the PS4 when we can go in a completely different direction? Which is a valid point, I guess. I don't want to believe it's a valid point because then I'm afraid that more people are going to pull the same shit. But it's a valid point. We'll see. Personally, I think it's it could go well for them. But not so well that they'd want to try it again. I don't think so. You know, I think I think maybe they'll make money from it, but they won't make anywhere near as much money uh, if they didn't go the way they did. And also, they need to fire the fucking PR team. I mean, God, those guys are awful. Did you see the shit that's come out recently? Like the fucking. Uh, oh. I'm like that's a pistol, and that's concerning because I haven't got any sort of editing software on this computer, so I have to do this in one take. There's already been four takes of this, so I better hurry up. But yeah, this genius shit recently is like, oh, uh, well, if you don't have the internet to uh, allow yourself the uh, the Xbox One. Then, um, just play the Xbox 360, which is a pretty firm state of the Fuck you! Uh, I don't know if this other one is true, but I saw one from, like, Xbox support that was like, uh, somebody going onto Xbox support and saying, what if I, uh, you know, apparently, uh, if I move out of the IP range of, um, registered Xbox Live companies, uh, one, with the Xbox One, the games I have registered on there will stop working. What if I travel uh, what if I travel around a lot? And there was like one Xbox this is the thing that makes you suspicious. He went to at Xbox support on Twitter. I don't use Twitter, so I don't know. But uh Xbox Support two replied. I don't know if that's an official account or not. Um saying uh you can play your Xbox One games when you get home. Use the Xbox 360 for on-the-move gaming. It's like, that's just a basic admittance that your Xbox 360 is more accessible than the Xbox One. Anyway, I've already talked about that enough. I'm going swiftly on to the next subject. I'm crossing it off on my fucking hand. Did I show you that early on, or was that one of the earlier texts from uh, my hand? Anyway, uh, Battlefront. Battlefront 3. Wow, that is an exciting announcement. I want to blow. I'm a little complacent, you know. We haven't seen a lot of it. We've we've only seen a little bit of like cutscene footage. I doubt that's true. I doubt that's rendered in the game engine. If it is, fucking awesome. If you didn't see it, it was basically this point of view shot of just like this snowy waste and then out of nowhere just the lasers and the feet of an 80, 80, an 80, 80, 80, 80 something the four-legged one on top um, you know walking by and it said Battlefront 3 it didn't yeah don't worry don't worry Joe I'm talking of, I talked about how much the Xbox One sucks um uh, yep. Yeah, um, you know we haven't seen a lot of it. 
I'm a little complacent. Um, I don't want to get the, after so long. It, it, do you ever get this feeling when you've been waiting for a game so long that you practically, you know, you practically thought it was dead, it was gone, and that there's no way that that's going to come back at all. You know, when you thought that much, do you ever sometimes just think when like an announcement trailer or something comes along, you're like. I got a bad feeling about this. You know, this would be the perfect position for this to be another Duke Nukem Forever and be woefully disappointing. But yeah. You know, my opinion, wait and see. Alright, I'm, I'm doing better. I covered that subject in a, a, a little over three minutes. Um, maybe by the end of the summer I'll be a somewhat decent YouTuber. Uh,. Paul, it's not on there yet, you impatient bastard. It ain't there yet. <laughs> I'm multitasking here. I'm learning to multitask. My tip of the week on gender equality, okay? You know, fact is, there are certain things that other genders are better at. It has been scientifically proven that the female brain is better at multitasking, and scientifically proven that the male brain takes more risks. But, however, that's nature. That's not taking into account nurture. And I can learn to multitask surprisingly well on the alcohol. Not so well when I'm sober. That's another condition. Okay, just be kind to each other. Fucking, the, the, the only reason to be a dick is if somebody's a dick. So why are the, why are so many cats I'm fucked, Paul! Um, <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a take now. This is gonna be a take, because that's gonna be in it. Um, I'm talking to Paul at the moment. Uh, he's in system. Anyway. Okay, next subject. Um, actually, I've been asked to say a subject. Okay. Pandas. Pandas. Kiana asked me to talk about pandas. Alright. Well, uh, pandas, pandas are cute, they're hilarious, see, well, here's the thing, I've heard from many of people, I mean, from the outset, they do look, seem pretty useless, maybe the bamboo would come alive and eat us, if we didn't keep them around, I don't know, maybe they're sustaining some sort of hidden balance, maybe they're secret warrior monks, I don't know. What I do know is they're cute and adorable and hilarious. And I wish them to stay around. But I don't know if it's good for to stay around. Because I'm not a biologist. Ask one of my... I'm on a fucking media course, damn it. I'm, I'm basically... I'm... I'm one of the lowest people here. <laughs> I think even the philosophers get more respect than the media course people. Jesus. But yeah, yeah, I'll ask somebody with better training on that, I don't know. I, I like pandas, I just don't know if they deserve to be saved or not. That's the thing, that's the thing, we're, we're all meddling and shit, we're all trying to save species and shit, we're forgetting survival of the fittest. What if, what if they're not supposed to be saved, is what I'm thinking. What if it's survival, what if it's the evolution doing its work and being like, well, fuck pandas. You know, they just, they just ain't pulling their weight. I don't know. Anyway, next subject. That's the on my hand this time. Well, War Z. Uh, <laughs> I've talked about this before. Um, I've got the book here. I've been rereading it recently. You know, it's funny. I, I thought, and I feel like reading for a bit this evening. You know, for bed. What should I read? Should I read? Should I read? Uh, continue reading snuff, which I I need to get through. Should I start on that Warhammer book? I because I wanted to get into Warhammer. I I'm a fan of the Warhammer science fiction universe. I never really played the tabletop, but I love the lore of it. Uh, and I wanted to get into Fort Warhammer Fantasy. I, I have a book and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> it was in the tooth one with snuff. Uh, Terry Pratchett, and uh, I 
I got a lot with it and I just I haven't read it since I think it was this time last year. No way. This time no. It was before Christmas. Um Yeah, you know, but but then I figured oh, I'll just read World War Z again. Fuck. Anyway. So yeah, I love this book. Which is why the film kinda of pisses me off a little and yet kinda of doesn't. Because here's the thing, the film has gone so far from the book at this point that I can barely even count it as a tie-in, you know? If people enjoy it for what it is, then fuck it. You know, it's just completely different from the book in every way, though. And also, those those zombie ant hills that we keep seeing in the advertising, I ain't drunk enough. Those zombie ant hills that we keep seeing in the advertising, you know, when they're climbing off the building, like, Rock. That's a little improbable, I think. I mean, uh, you know, they are zombies, they're voracious and all that, you know, and I guess the idea of them acting like ants is kind of cool, but at the same time, you know, um, how, I, I, I don't think logistically it's likely that they manage to build that tower without toppling over. Just see one of the trailers and you know what I'm talking about, especially near the end where you've got this like huge zombie tower over this like 50 foot wall and it's like bigger than the wall from Attack on Titan or something. I've been, been trying to watch Attack on Titan recently. Law has been making <laughs> not no. Um, yeah, yeah, basically I like to not look at pyramid things. Uh, if at all possible. I don't have problems with people who do, especially when it comes to anime, because we're screwed over. This is a new conversation topic, by the way. I talk about World War Z, I think it's kind of stupid, but it could be kind of fun. I'll probably end up watching it at some point, through morbid curiosity, either on DVD or if I get really, really bored, I'll watch it in the summer, at the local cinema. Um, which is the summer, I'll probably be really, really bored. Um, yeah, yeah. Seriously, you know, we don't have a decent supply of anime in this country. We don't have decent options. You know, when it is, when it, when you do find it on DVD, it's like three episodes for the same price that most TV series will be charging for a full season. I don't know why. Maybe there's something I'm not getting here. Maybe there's something I'm not respecting here. But still, I find it a little harsh. You know, I mean, it's just it's just a little stupid. But oh well, I can't I can't get to watch it. Though I have seen, I've got the fucking theme tune managed to get stuck in my head because I saw it on YouTube. Fucking theme tune. You know, you know whenever you you know whenever you like fucking get a foreign language song stuck in your head, the tune of it, and you start singing it. And it's just the odd word that you understand. It's like a little fucking Ramstein. I put up to a Mickey Mouse. You put up to a Hippo Mouse. It's like you don't. You get feel like you're disrespecting it even further by trying to imitate it, but you just you've got the fucking thing stuck in your head, and of course you end up singing it. But you don't know. You don't even know what the Japanese words are, and even then you don't know. What the fucking words mean? <laughs> this is ridiculous. You just sit I was sitting there playing fucking King of Malmiller early on today and I was like Kuraita Yaga Fucking what? <laughs> just get stuck in your head and you're like, I don't even know the words when when fucking system of down gets stuck in your head, you're like Wake up! Make up! Uh, I need to hurry up. Okay, got a couple more things on the list. Uh, oh, wait, I talked about pandas. Shit. Anyway, uh, Krieg, the, the recommendation of a week, I guess. Krieg the Psycho. I'm gonna talk about, remind me to talk about Stay of Decay next time, because I'm bordering the 20 minute mark here. Free the Psycho DLC for Borderlands. This made me get back into Borderlands. It's like ridiculously fun. It's insane. 
the tree that I'm doing, the mania tree, basically focuses on you taking damage to make yourself more powerful. It's fucking insane. Which is what you expect when I the DLC called Creed of the Psycho. The, the, the character is really good as well. Really fun. You know, I thoroughly recommend it. Well worth your 800 points or whatever you're paying for it. I haven't played enough of the actual... I, I bought the season pass after that because it like actually got me back into Borderlands enough for me to justify the season pass. So, yeah. I I should full review that at some point. I'll probably do a review of State of Decay at some point as well when I've played enough of it. You know, from this it's hard. I'd recommend trying it out at any rate. Anyway, uh, see you next time. Is there anything else? that people have asked me to say about? No, no, they haven't. Alright. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to find the stop button. Anyway, see you next time, shit.